Great radio stations across the land, JoePags.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email. It's all right there, plus the live video feed. It's the Joe Pags Show. Glad to have you here. Really glad to have this guy back. His, uh, his name is Vince Everett Ellison, and he's an author. He's got a book out called The Iron Triangle. We'll explain that in a moment. Vince, how are you? Man, I'm doing great, Joe. I was doing very well before I found out from these leftists this week. They told me that I'd have a billion dollars in the bank if you weren't such a racist. <laughs> <laughs> it's all on me. No, you're right. It's all- it's all on you, man. They said we got to send you to a re-edu- re-education camp. And you know, I've got to give you my house. I got to give you my car. Yeah, yeah, I got to yeah, give you everything. Yeah. 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 And then, then I got to shine your shoes. You got to do all that. <laughs> and the critical race theory thing. So I didn't know until this week that Joe Pags was holding me back. Uh, I get, so now I, I understand. You found out now, man. Hey, hey, listen, <laughs> uh, I got to tell you, I love talking about this stuff because it's so loony and it's so and it's so bizarre. That oh, uh, I, I, you and I don't think people will buy it, but people are buying yeah, it. So, yeah, so let's yeah, talk about the book, yeah. The Iron Triangle, and the the subtitle is long, but but it's important on um, how Democrats are using race to divide America in their quest for power and how we can stop them. First and yeah. foremost, as always, what does the Iron Triangle refer to? What does that mean? Well, uh, go over my story again. I was born on a cotton plantation in Haywood County, Tennessee. My father was a sharecropper, and uh, he worked hard, bought us out of the cotton field through uh, hard work. He got into the insurance industry and he got, became profitable. We all went to college. And then, uh, you know, I thought we had overcome. My brothers and sisters and I have, have done very well in America. I started working in the prison system as a young man. And while working there, I noticed that we were reverting. And when I asked the black intelligentsia what was going on, they said it was those evil, rich, white Republicans that hated black people. So I went down and started working in the nonprofit arena to try to help save some of these black men. And what I found was that it wasn't any evil white Republicans. You see a unicorn before you saw one. Right. You saw this 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 entity, these three occupations making a lot of money off of the chaos. Yeah. And I call them the Iron Triangle. Most black preachers, most black politicians, and most black civic organizers. And with all the civil uprising you see right now, you see them in full effect. You find so few of them that are willing to speak out against the violence, the murder, the hatred, the envy, that's going on right now in the cities and the streets. And you see black preachers marching with Marxists. Yeah. You see the, uh, uh, Black Lives Matter, which is really burn, loot, and murder mm. out there, and Antifa doing their thing. So it's it's the triangle again in full effect, man, and I called it over a year ago. Uh, you certainly did. The Iron Triangle. Go and get this book from, uh, from Vince Everett Ellison right now. You know, it's interesting as you bring up these preachers and these social justice warriors and, and these people who are allegedly leaders, civil rights leaders. They're not. I don't know what happened to Jesse Jackson, but he used to be a civil rights leader when he was with Martin Luther yeah. King Jr. Um, Al Sharpton is just a former you know FBI informant. He was like a drug guy in New York. I mean, we know that. It's a fact. They've got him on undercover video. I don't know who this guy is, uh, but he's somehow yeah. a leader as well. And then you've got BLM, Black Lives Matter, who really want us to believe that rioting and looting and murdering and mayhem and burning things down is okay because slavery. But if you go and look at their website, and you know this, Vince, you look at their uh-huh. website, it says they want to dismantle the, the traditional American family or the yes. you know, the, the, the yes. traditional nuclear family. That means get rid of dad. Yeah. Get dad out of the house yeah. and the government will be yeah. dead. They also are pushing a very LGBTQ um, um, uh, ideology that people don't talk about much, and they hate right. the police. Why would yep. any black person want to get rid of police? When you ask people in Harlem, they don't want police to be gone. They want police to protect them. So how did we get here? We got here because we, number one, we don't, the, the conservatives haven't gone to the black community to talk to them. So they're getting one side of the conversation. You're getting liberals and ultra liberals. And they are telling us that white conservatives hate us, that they are trying to kill us, and that they are our protectors. And they've been doing this since 1800. I mean, it's the old slave system. Just reimagine. Uh, they've always had violence and, and coercion. Uh, from 1800 to 1860, it was the slave master's whip. Right. 1860, 1865, Confederacy. 1865 to 1965, the Ku Klux Klan, red shirts, white conservative council, and now BLM and, and Antifa. And because they are so isolated and the Iron Triangle has so much access to the black community, they hear no other side of the story. And so now they're there saying that the police are the problem. Look, I saw a study that said that black men are, are the odds are greater they get struck by a bolt of lightning than that they will get shot by a police officer. Wow. Nevertheless, Black, the black community, that their biggest problem is not education, it's not drugs, it's not family breakdown, it is not poverty. The things that they have to deal with every day, they convince them that it's getting shot by a police officer. Man, I tell you what, Nikolai Lennon, Mao Zedong, 
These guys would love this type of brain control, and they got it. It's uh, Vince Everett Ellison. The name of the book is The Iron Triangle. Go and get this right now. Um, I don't know if you saw this piece of video, but I'll, I'll relate it to you exactly how it went down. A couple of guys, a couple of black guys walk into a CVS. I don't know if you saw this, but mm. it's out there on social mm-hmm. media today. They're shoplifting. Okay. The, C- the CVS manager catches them, calls the police, tells the police... Well, I don't want to press charges, uh, whatever. We caught them. You got the stuff back. It just, I don't want them to come back to the store. A local BLM activist shows up at the store, confronts the manager. Why did you call the police on these two men because they were taking things? You put their lives in jeopardy because the police were going to show up and shoot them. Now, mm-hmm. Vince, this is a young black woman who said this. I don't know if she's just stupid, if she's indoctrinated, or she knows that she's lying, but she's it's for a greater gain. Does it matter? Because we really shouldn't live in a world where anybody can go and shoplift, depending on their race, and get away with it, because we fear police will kill them, which, as you said, is very unlikely to happen. So mm. here we are. How do we change that? Because there are more young people through social media that will see her and support her lunacy that it's okay to shoplift, don't call the police, then, then would say, hey, these guys were shoplifting. What's the deal? How do, we, how do we get to the minds of the young people that are stuck on their phones, they're stuck on these all day long, reading social media, and believing the garbage they're getting? The left and the Democrats have created a dystopia in, black, in the black community. They took the father out of the home, as you know. They took the schools then, and they started teaching all kinds of idiocy. They took discipline out. They took God out. They took any and everything out that could bring them and keep them where they were supposed to be. So what do we do? It's an intervention. Christians have to go in to save other Christians. We go all the way to Africa and Asia. We go to Europe. We go to South America to to turn people to Christianity. When we have been given a commission by Jesus Christ to go out and evangelize, he said, but first start here in Jerusalem and Judea and then go to the rest of the, the, the earth. We won't start here. We won't go across the street to our own fellow Christians and tell them. And 85% of these people say they're Christian. All we have to do is do what my father does whenever I used to show out. Slap me upside the head and remind me who I am. <laughs> Tell them who they are. It doesn't you happen these days. A, yeah. You are not a victim. And we need to tell white community, the white Christians, you cannot live in condemnation. When these jokers come to you and talk about talking about white supremacy and start telling about white privilege, you tell them you are a slave looking for a master. And I refuse to be your master. Yeah. Go back to one of your white liberal friends and ask them to be your master. I will teach you to exercise your freedom because you are a free man just as I am, and I refuse to live in condemnation. They are teaching, and they are trying to tell the white community to live in condemnation, and they're trying to tell the black community to live in fear and victimization. I refuse both. Stand up and be a man, and that's what we need to tell. We start with the truth, and white people start being afraid of being called racist. Iron that's tri- how we beat the Klan. IronTrianglebook.com, IronTrianglebook.com. Get the Iron Triangle, how Democrats are using race to divide Americans in their quest for power and how we can stop them. Part of the Iron Triangle, as you said, are the ministers or the preachers. You know who worked with them really well? Margaret Sanger, mm. when she started Planned oh, Parenthood. Yeah. She She actually, yeah. because people wondered, how is it that she was going after the black women who are having babies, how was she successful? She made these devil pacts with these preachers in black communities. And the preachers in black communities would tell the young girls, don't have the baby, go and have it aborted. Margaret Sanger hated black people. She was a eugenicist. She wanted to get rid of what she called the weeds in our society. Planned Parenthood is is an organization that gets half a billion dollars of taxpayer money every year and, and kills 900 babies a day. And the black community, by and large, has supported this organization. Again, it sounds like just a dumb question that I keep asking, but how on earth were they able to convince these young black women that it's okay to go to the local clinic and get rid of that unborn child? Why does that happen so often? And again, how do we change it? Well, again, in our Bible, Jesus was with the young people, and he said that it would be better that a a, a, a millstone be tied around your neck and you'd be thrown into the sea that you cause one of these young ones to sin. Cause. Yeah. And as a lawyer, you know that when you cause something, the other person has no liability. Right. Now think about this. you got a 16-year-old child who's pregnant. She goes to the NWCP. They say abort it. She goes to the black preacher. He says abort it. She goes to the politician. They say abort it, and she gets it done. They're the cause. Yep. The preacher, the the, 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 the civic organizers, and the politicians. And they have turned these children into they monetize them for the left. They get over fifty thousand dollars every aborted fetus in the black community, and those children get nothing. 
See, they put this sex education in the schools so they'll have sex, have these children, and then have to abort them, and then they take the baby parts and they sell them for money. Wow. This is big money for the left. This is what they do. And this is why this is so dangerous. And this is why this intervention has to come, because what I just told you, a lot of people don't know. And because the, 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 the conservatives haven't come down there, and many of them have so little credibility, most black people don't even know that the Democratic Party is a party of abortion. Vince, are they doing most a better job, though? This. Are they doing a better job getting into the community? Listen, when he ran for president, Donald Trump said, what do you have to lose? Because things aren't going Donald great Trump now. Why not? only one. That's right. Donald Trump is the only one that's done it since Abraham Lincoln did it in 1865. And that's why they're changing. You're going to see Donald Trump get a large amount of the black vote this time because he's been talking directly to the black community for the first time. Well, I think Mitt and Romney, I think Mitt Romney got two percent, and and Donald yeah, Trump. Yeah. I, I mean, people are saying he could get as much as twenty, which would be un- yes. it'd be ten times, which would be amazing. The name of the book is The Iron Triangle: How Democrats Are Using uh, Race to Divide Americans in Their Quest for Power and how we stop them. I don't have a ton of more time, but i got to get into big sports quickly. You've got LeBron James out there acting the fool, supporting the Chinese Communist Party, wearing BLM and Breonna Taylor and Jacob Blake on his on his jersey. Black Lives Matter is on the court now for the NBA. I can't watch it. It's like they don't want me to watch it. It's very strange. I can't watch football. I love football. I can't watch it. They've got Jacob Blake, an accused rapist. They've got his name on their helmets. Vince, help me understand why big sports is in the bag for this garbage, because they're not our role models. They used to be. I wanted to play baseball like a, my my favorite baseball player, like Reggie Jackson. I wanted to play basketball like Michael Jordan. I wanted to play football like Dan Marino or, or somebody. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, I'm told, don't watch us if you don't agree with our ridiculous Marxist, backward, racist uh, ideology. So what, what do they gain? They're trying to get the young people too? Why are they doing it? Do, do things, they believe the it? Owners- there's the two things. The owners are very liberal, and they're using their athletes to push their politics. One. Okay. Number two, think about how young these athletes are. Many of these children, many of these young people are children of Barack Obama. That's Barack true. Barack Obama started, right. started running, for, children, started running for, for president in 2006, 14 years ago. Wow. Think about a 24-year-old basketball player. He was 10 years old. Yeah. And all he heard was Obama, Obama, Obama. And in the last two years of Obama's life, uh, of, of his presidency, he stood in the White House and called America racist. He did. He said, racism is in our DNA. He and Eric Holder, Eric Holder said that when it comes down to race, we are a country of cowards. They spent the last two years of their, their of his administration trashing this country to the black community, trashing Donald Trump to the black community, telling them that they couldn't do what he did, telling them that telling them they were inferior, telling them that white people were holding them down and America was holding them down. And these are their, his children. He could have taken these children and told them, you can be anything you want in America. We thought when he got elected in 2008, we had finally crossed that Rubicon. We were done with this. But instead, the last two years of his presidency, he was given an order. Make sure you put these black people back on the plantation. You're right. That's your job. And that's what he did. And these are his children. And they have gone further back than our generation, Joe, ever was. But when when um, you see the ratings go down almost 40% on Monday Night Football, yeah. that makes me feel better because this means that Americans, black, white, everything in between, are saying, I don't need your crap thrust down my throat when I'm watching a, a baseball right. game or a football game or a basketball game. I want to get away from this for a couple of hours. Why are you doing this? And they're ruining their own brand. I want to talk about that yeah. for another entire interview if you can come back soon. Can you? <laughs> Man, anytime, Joe. Just call me. I'm here for you. Brother. I appreciate you. It is the Iron Triangle, how Democrats are using race to divide Americans in their quest for power and how we can stop them. The website is irontrianglebook.com. He is a great author and analyst. His name is Vince Everett Ellison. Go and get this book right now. Vince, I appreciate you. Let's talk soon. All right, brother. Love you. All right, man. love you too. We're back after this in the Joe Pag Show. Stay right here.